you know, I think you're, I think with common core the disciplinary literacy, it was trying to push forward, but I think people missed the concept. Good morning. Welcome to the Wednesday, January 18th, 2017 meeting of the Charter Authorizing Panel. Um, first on our agenda is a Chair's Report. I have no items other than to welcome Ms. Lisa Haley to the Charterize, Charter Authorizing Panel. <coughs> any additional notes from any of our panel members? All right. With then we'll move on to item number two, the consent agenda, approval of the minutes. May I ask a question before we? Absolutely. Um, in looking at the minutes, I noticed that in some of the minutes, the renewal time period in the closing, we find an example. If we go to the December 13th, I'm looking at a consistent consistency that may be um, maybe a, a benefit to less looking back in time. If you look at, let me take us back to December 14th. I, I wrote the notes down but didn't write the agenda piece down. On the December 14th. A2. A2. Yellow stem. Unanimous, unanimously to approve the application for three year renewal term. In other examples, it just said unanimous, <laughs> easy for you to say, unanimously to, uh, to approve the, the renewal. So I'm wondering if it, we could have a change in the minutes to actually put the term of renewal uh, placed in there. Is there a, a question about that or a problem with that? Mr. Scott, do you want to address that? Absolutely. Uh, it would be no problem whatsoever to be consistent um, in recognizing the term. And so we can go back and make those appropriate changes so that each contract will reflect the terms and the, the phrase unanimous approval. And I believe looking back, if we ever need to pull our minutes, we could look at that. Instead of looking at the full transcript, we could actually see of the length of the term of the renewal term so that was just a suggestion on my part sir no problem with civil we'll okay that. other than that I saw nothing that I felt needed to be corrected any other comments Ms. Barnes um, I don't I, I don't really have a comment I was trying to determine if the reason that was was because the term um, wasn't that the different term uh, less than what they were asking or was that exactly what they were asking i've forgotten i remember reading through it but i was wondering if that was why it was and out. i i had thought of that because it, th what caught my eye i don't know if it makes i was a looking difference. for the 13 number with um <laughs> you know it, and that wasn't there then i noticed it was in previous okay. um so i don't think it i mean i don't have a have a concern with it i was just i think i accepted it like it was sure in the differences but uh, for, 
consistency, if you like, we can indicate the number of terms, and we also have a, a background sheet as well that spells out and captures everything so that we're saying the same things in regards to the term. The request is one thing, but the actual uh, approval True. will set the stage for indicating that on, on the, in the minutes. Okay. Dr. Coach, are you requesting that they correct these minutes to reflect that or going forward? I, well, since we discovered it with these, maybe is it is it possible to correct these minutes, or does that sure. require another action at the next meeting? It'll require it would require another action at the next yeah. meeting. Unless that's a problem with my colleagues here, I'm I would recommend we start the consistency of demonstrating that now. Everyone okay with that? I'm fine. Good. Okay, so we'll defer the minutes to the next meeting for final approval. Yes. Okay. Great. Thank you, folks. All right, um, action item one, 2017 open enrollment charter school application. Uh, Ms. Boyd is not here, so Mr. Scott? Yes, before you is a draft of the 2017 open enrollment um, public charter school application. Um, there were revisions made as a result of uh, gaining input from various stakeholders and uh, we're requesting that you review and, and, we, and uh, allow us to make the appropriate changes. We'd like to have your approval to move forward on it so we can make it public. We are here also to answer any questions you may have in regards to this application. Thank you. Panel members, any questions? Any comments? I was pleased to see the redundancies taken out mm -hmm. of things that we can provide so um, kudos to dr saunders and his team for the my school info that makes it easily uh, accessible to pull up the school data i had a, a question on this application i think one thing that's very beneficial to me and it i don't know if it would really be contained within the application but some form of summary sheet of Re exist well I guess if it's a renewal or an amendment of existing waivers in a one page just with the title with that section of code and then the additional section of new waivers or with this being a new application it, it would all be new so if there was just some way that we could just get that summarized into a uh, the section of code and, and what it's addressing. What summary sheet do we already receive on an app applicant? Do we already receive some sort of a summary? For new applications, the summary sheet um, usually just uh, tells where the school's gonna be located, how many students, what grades they're gonna serve, and if we have any remaining concerns. With renewal applications, it also includes um, if there are any like citations with standards and things of that nature. We have one pager um, waiver sheets for all schools, so it won't be a problem to add those to the package. To add that to, yeah. Okay. Any other questions or comments, Ms. Ms. Haley? Yes, thank you. Um, I just had a couple of questions on some of the items, if that's okay. Like, um, I made some notes on page 15. There's a, a section on special education. And can you direct us to which, which yeah, document? It is on the charter application directions. The open enrollment application mm -hmm. instructions. Are you speaking in reference to prompt what we have? Is I'm sorry. Eight? It's on the open enrollment application. Uh-huh. 8D. It Let used me. to be 9D and now it's 8D. Let me see. I made these notes on another sheet of paper. 8D? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. And my question was about including appropriate um assessments because that would be required for anyone so i was wondering why that was in the 
language. Right. The directive is there um, because a lot of before we started including that statement or that clause, we were getting a lot of responses that didn't include um, appropriate assessments. So it's really part of that statement as a directive to make sure that the applicant knows they need to include that for special education students. So do they mean like um, state assessments? Is that what it's referring to? Or mm -hmm. dis okay. Yes, ma'am. Ms. Haley, do you have any others? Well, I have one more question on the um, recruitment section of the application. I think it's number 10, and it talks about efforts to recruit students. And I'm wondering about, you know, there's an issue with charter schools in terms of the number of kids with disabilities that are served. And I'm just wondering if it's possible to include some language um, here or someplace else that talks about their efforts to highlight their special education services, not necessarily recruiting kids, but so that parents know that they do offer um, special education. I know a lot of the charter school um, publications I read for special education um, talk about that and that's one of the ways to increase the numbers of kids with disabilities who are accessing the charter schools. So I don't know if it's here in the directions just in our um, PD or if we could even require it, but I think that that's something that we need to look at. Ms. Boyd. Um, I definitely think that's something we can do in our mandatory workshop. Um, and I'll talk to Ms. Davis about the implications of uh, making a compulsory in the application. One question I noticed on both sets of applications, and it may be the My School Info, Dr. Saunders, the removal of the charts, mm -hmm. it was removed because of, right. the, of the services we have with My School Info. Is that, was that the reason for the removal of the charts and graphs? Yeah, one of the things we discussed is that, um, so my team has expanded, and it includes people who have completed applications before on behalf of uh, school applicants. So it's really helpful in going through this application process, uh, revising this application with them. And we want them to provide the information. However, we don't want it in a plug and chug kind of way. So that was the main reason that we thought about. We're still providing them with the data and where to find the data, but we want to really leave it up to the applicant to show us that they're able to really analyze the data and say what it means to them and why they want to put a school in the area. Does that make sense? It does. I think we discussed about streamlining the application to make mm -hmm. it less of a compliance piece and right. more of really to demonstrate their ability, their capacity, their fulfillment of a, of a goal of meeting the needs of kids. So, yes, sir. yeah, I was just curious. I couldn't remember back if that was something we discussed at one of our last meetings, but thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other? Dr. Saunders? Yeah, regarding that data, I think your question to the panel, is that data that that you all feel is necessary and important in the application process to uh, for us to provide to the panel? You will get in your packet. You, um, we provide you with the ESEA data for the school, for the district which in which the school will be located. That's the only, yeah. So you'll get that data. But we agree, we think that information is important. However, we didn't think that it was important for us to prescribe that it come in chart form. It's already in report form. Right, and, and just with the work that the Charter Office themselves is doing by organizing the information in the same format, from our own databases and being able to submit that to us gives us some consistency instead of each charter trying to grab that information and us digging and trying to find it. So that's, I think, a help for us from the charter office organizing some of that information for us from our own data systems. So it looks the same each time. Any other questions or concerns? 
Uh, I want to go back to the waivers when because what Saunders was, Dr. Saunders was talking about where they're, how they're presented to us and how we look at them on the renewals, and just wanted to get a, a little more clarification on how we're going to see them. Um, because I know on the legal review, there are a list of them, but it doesn't say, and it says when they're new or something, but I'd just like to know actually what the charter is going to, the waiver is, how what in law what it is. I'd just like a little more description on it. So I was. Um, as you saw in the. Oh, I'm sorry. It's early in the morning. Uh, Jennifer Davis, staff attorney for the department. Um, as you saw in the last um, set of um, applications or renewals that we just saw in the amendments, I tried to kind of put together a chart that just kind of streamlined what your waivers are and if there were any issues. But um, I do go and ask the applicant, you know, and analyze why they say they need it. And have, you know, most of them have to provide additional rationale or if there's any additional waivers that they need. So I will still include that, but I'm trying to kind of fine tune a one page cheat sheet, so to speak, or one page summary that makes it easier for you to ident identify what it is that they've asked for, whether there's any issues, and then if there are any issues or you want to see why they've asked for it or what their reasoning is, then you can go into the further documentation that's provided. So if you have any specific suggestions on how you would like to see that, like I said, we tried um, it last time. Um, it's a little bit better, but um, we'll try to make it even better until it meets your specific needs in the future. Ms. Davis, I think one thing that um, might be helpful as we're looking at those waivers, um, just to denote if it's a waiver that's not been asked for previously, mm -hmm. um, if it's standard practice for mm -hmm. um, open enrollment or for district conversion. Uh, we have a great tool that we used with the State Board last week, I think right. kind of helps us, but um, if they're asking for one that we're not used to that maybe it's highlighted or denoted so that we know to go in and dig deeper into that one right and that was included last time because there was a few people that did ask for something that had not been asked for in the past or had not been granted in the past not necessarily asked for but it was included more in the rationale and the review and it was not included in the summary page so unless you were reading all the way through it or digging in you didn't see it so i'll try to get that included on the summary so that way it'll make it just easier for you guys Ms. Haley? I have just one more thing, and it was on the um, open enrollment application instructions on page 21, um, evaluation criteria. One of the bullets uh, talks about um, students with disabilities, and it says sound plans for uh, educating special education students, and I'm wondering if we could just change it to students with disabilities or students with disabilities eligible under IDEA or something like that because I noticed it had been changed to that language in some of the other sections, and I think we just need to look for that. Thank you. Um, I know we were talking about waivers just a second ago, and I asked uh, Mr. Breeze to pull up the waiver document, or the amendment request document that's been updated recently. I don't know if you've seen this, um, but if you could scroll to the bottom. This is what I knew waiver request document looks like. Um, it has a little bit more information on it. Um, I think it'll be helpful. So we've separated from code, standards, and rules. And then under each, we ask for the number and the title. And then we also ask for um, the rationale right there. So that could be helpful to you all as well. That's great. I think that's very good. Thank you. Thank you. I'll I'll give Elise your regards. <laughs> I do too, and I, I want to make one comment. Can we bring that back up? Is it possible I notice on that yellow box it says, uh, please note every waiver, the one on the bottom right, mm -hmm. every waiver request must be accompanied by rationale, and it says a desire for flexibility alone is not a sufficient rationale. Mm -hmm. Possibly to include another line, um, I think the rationale should include how it benefits students. Mm -hmm. To me, is a is a driving force. I think yeah. to me is is no, the reason right. for any ration for anyway. We have that somewhere. 
but I'm put on this page as well. You add it to just the first sentence. Okay. I get. Thank you. Accompanied by rationale that. I mean, benefit students. Yeah, that's that good. That explains the benefit to students. Ms. Davis, at this time, do we need to table this item until those revisions can be made that were requested, or can we approve it with the revisions that we've discussed today? You can approve. You can do either, but I mean, if you, if those are the only changes that you have. Um, and most of them are just small, you know, some commentary. My suggestion would be so that way the charter office can go ahead and get the applications out um, that you approve it on the condition that these changes are made. Okay, thank you. Ms. Smith. I move that we, I move that we um, approve the application with the um, revisions as requested today in this session. I second. Motion's been made by Ms. Barnes, seconded by Ms. Smith to approve the application with uh, revisions. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried unanimously. Um, action item two, district conversion charter school application. Ms. Boyd. Yes, um, the changes to the district conversion application were not as lengthy. Um, we didn't have as many comments from stakeholders about that. Um, and we're open to any questions you have about those documents. Panel members. Ms. Boyd, just a comment on both. I, I love the, the timeline piece. It's just uh, one page. Anyway, that, that was Thank one you. piece just that, that I wanted to compliment on both applications. I'm sure you've done that before, but it caught my eye this time. Maybe it's a new border that you put on it. I'm not <laughs> sure, but it caught my eye, and I appreciate that. Thank you. They'll, they will fill out the same waiver request sheet that you had on there. So that's yes, the, the consistency between the two. Yes, ma'am. So I also think that any of the suggestions we made on the previous application that apply to this one would carry over as well. Mm -hmm. Ms. Haley? I just have a question on the markup for the um, application for the district conversion public charter just because I'm not um, familiar so it says on page pages are covered up five that um, the notice was published in a newspaper having general circulation in which it will be um, that three weeks prior to the meeting and I thought on the other one it said it had to be posted weekly for three weeks so is that different for this one yeah okay. that's according to I'm not completely sure if it's statute or rule but that's the way that okay the I figured but mm -hmm. I just noticed that any other questions or comments then I'll accept a motion I'll make a motion to uh, approve this application with the suggested changes. Motion has been made by Dr. Saunders, seconded by Dr. Gocher to approve the district conversion charter school application with revisions. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion has carried unanimously. Uh, Ms. Boyd, are there any additional items? to be considered before the panel today? No, ma'am. Then I'll accept a motion to <coughs> adjourn. So moved. Second. 
All those in favor? Aye. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.